You're not? No, are you? Yeah. It's so pretty. In the summer of 2018, we decided to take a road trip from New York to Nova Scotia in Canada. Hold your pee, I'm not stopping. But we were going to do it in a 2017 Chevrolet Bolt, an all-electric vehicle, the prospect of which feels a bit like this. With a full charge, it has a range of 238 miles. We are planning on driving a total of about 2,000. Cue the range anxiety. Hi, camera. We're just planning our trip to Nova Scotia in Canada. Yeah, and I love Dunkin' Donuts. One of the first things I did was to plan our route using PlugShare, which is an indispensable tool. One great feature is the trip planner. You can put in your starting point and your destination, and it will show you compatible charging stations between those points. Dunkin' Donuts. You, you're excited to stop at the Dunkin' Donuts supercharger? Mm-hmm. Why? Because I love after ordering cards from the networks we would charge at in both the U.S. and Canada, renewing passports, testing out the children for strength and hardiness, <laughs> packing for two weeks of camping, including our juice box EVSC, which we used to charge at home, we were ready to go. I love Dunkin' Donuts because it has a lot of donuts. Why are we going to Dunkin' Donuts? Because that's our first charging station. It was clear everybody was psyched to visit Can Dunkin Donuts. Canada. Dunkin Donuts. To visit Canada. How many miles until Dunkin Donuts? One thing the uninitiated will need to know is how to read the driver's dash display, because I'll make continued brief reference to it and show you bad shaky camera footage of it. It basically breaks down into three sections. The first, on the left, is what many call the gasometer. It shows you your estimated range based on the current state of charge, your current driving style, and conditions. It also shows you the maximum range if you drive more conservatively, and the minimum range if you drive like you stole it. Then there's the speed, self-explanatory. And finally, the amount of power either coming out of the battery, yellow, or being put back in, green, during regenerative braking, when going downhill, or when charging. The first planned charging stop, if it wasn't already obvious, was going to be Dunkin' Donuts, 106 miles away. I'd even printed out a spreadsheet with all the stops, in case we lost cell reception. We planned for everything, except, you know, the sun. Much to the annoyance of three-year-olds, who haven't figured out to blame you for scrimping on some cheap pull-down shades for the window. And to make things even more annoying. We're trying to do the morning without uh, using air conditioning just to kind of save miles, but it is getting pretty hot. It's supposed to get to like 92 degrees today, but are you guys getting hot? Yeah. You know what? Let me just turn on the air. It'll be better for now. You said no air conditioning. It's not air conditioning. It's just the fan. Oh. Yeah, I can smell that and I can feel that. Can you feel it? With nice hot highway air blowing and the mystery of the sandwich smell solved, savvy viewers might have noted that Dunkin' Donuts is only 106 miles away, and we currently have 274 miles of charge. But April and I, due to range anxiety, have what the Germans refer to as Schiss, and I will proudly reveal that most of that Schiss is not mine. How many letters is it? Aside from holding off on AC, we also wanted to hold off on screen time, so that meant interacting. Are we sure it's seven letters long? Hangman interaction. A? Yep. Where did the A go? That's the second letter. Carrots. Are you cheating back there? No. Are you sure? Yes. Highway bingo interaction. I'm hot. Then why don't you take a nap interaction? Standard kid lines interaction. Are we in Canada? We are in Connecticut. And standard parent line interaction. We have to go to the bathroom. Hold your pee, I'm not stopping. But everyone has their breaking point. Hour and a half into the trip, and we're gonna turn the AC on. <laughs> because it's too hot. So it went from 191 to 184. We 
are three minutes from our first charging stop and PlugShare as well as EVgo are telling us that it is taken. In addition to using the PlugShare app, many of the charging networks have their own apps where you can find stations, check to see if a station is occupied, and even activate your charging session. So we're gonna just stop, get a donut, use the bathroom, and see if maybe the person who's there doesn't need it, but we're, we're over 50%. We have 169 miles, so this is one of the pitfalls of traveling during the busiest weekend of the summer, which is July 4th weekend. But the EVgo stations are limited to 45 minutes, so maybe this person is close to their finish. The Are destination is, is, is on your right. Oh, it's a Prius Prime. Oh, they're right. sitting in the car. Just pull up next to him. He might just be pulling in. Hey. Are you just starting? Yeah. Okay. It's a busy station this morning. I know, right? Were you waiting for it? Yeah. Okay. The Prius Prime at the charging station did not have the right kind of plug to charge there. So I, the man with the diagram of a J1772 plug on his t-shirt, gave him a quick primer. Here it is. There are several plug types. I'll tell you about three. The first and most common has a name so catchy, you'll never need to hear it again. The J1772. J1772. If for some reason you do forget, just remember this handy little rhyme. In 1772, Christopher J. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. It's what most people have at home. It's not a so-called fast charger. The Dunkin' Donuts fast charging station has two different plugs, a Chatamo plug that looks like this, and a CCS or combo plug, which is what the Chevy Bolt uses for high-speed DC fast charging and basically looks like a J1772 with balls hanging from it. Eat your heart out, truck nuts. So Mr. Prius's unfortunate mistake was our good fortune. But if curious passers-by are chatty Cathy's, they can turn your DC fast charge into a slow charge. If you're not willing to say, Let me pull up and pull in here so I can get in the spot, charge up. There was just enough time to chat some more with Kathy for donuts, coffee, some interview questions. Now, what's your favorite kind of drink? Beer. Ew! A game of Uno, a potty break, and another chat with a far less chatty Kathy. It has no gasoline engine in it, right? No gas, that's pure electric. Yeah, you're really hanging yourself out there, right? Yeah, we're going to Canada too, so it's oh, gonna yeah? be, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was laughing at me. Okay, so it looks like we have charged to about almost 90% and it's tapered to about 45 amps now. Sometimes EV drivers talk about tapering like everyone knows what it is, like I just did. You don't really need to know what I'm going to show you next. So if you don't want to geek out, skip ahead 1 minute and 26 seconds. Tapering is something the car is programmed to do. As I understand it, it protects the longevity of the battery. Here's a very brief explanation of how it works. A Chevy Bolt can charge the battery at a rate dependent on its current state of charge and the power of the station, measured in kilowatts. The Bolt can charge up to around 54 kilowatts. The EVgo station I'm at happens to charge around 34 kilowatts. The Bolt will accept charge at full speed up until the battery is somewhere between 55 to 70% full and then it will taper or cut the power intake and charge at a slower rate. Then it charges at that speed happily until the battery is about 85% full when it tapers again. This is generally where I stop a fast charge. After all, these stations are charging me by the minute, not by the gallon or kilowatt hour, I guess, if you want to be technical. But if money is no object and no one's waiting behind you, or if you just plain need the charge, you'll see another drop in power until the bolt is at about 95%. At which point you'll see another drop that brings you down into speeds slightly better than top L2 or J1772 speeds. My disclaimer, Graph assumes optimal conditions. The Chevy Bolt tapers differently depending on the power of the charging station. Different cars taper differently and there are many variables that play a role, so do your own research for a more thorough understanding. For this convenience, I paid $9.45 for 18.88 kilowatt hours, which works out to around 50 cents per kilowatt hour. 
which is pretty spendy, considering I pay six to 12 cents when I charge at home. But if I'm brave enough to wear my shirt tag like this, I'm brave enough to shell out the big bucks for convenience. Some stations will automatically end your session, like this one was supposed to, at 45 minutes. I wanna see if it stops at exactly 45 minutes. All right, so it looks like it's blown right through that, but we're at 90%, so we'll just stop and go to our next charging station. And so we were on our merry way again, for almost 30 seconds. What? What's wrong? Oh shit, we left something on the roof. Oh, 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 what is it? It was a coloring book and some crayons. The Chevy Bolt has a reminder that you may have left something in the back seat, but nothing to remind you that you left something on the roof of the car. Feature request, GM, if you're listening. Go. The next leg of our drive was a mere 70 miles. Okay, so we, what did we say we had? 169 miles before that charge. So now we have 234-ish uh, while using the AC. And it's about an hour and a half to our next charging station at Solomon Pond Mall, where we'll stop for lunch and charge up again. Dad, you're doing too many of those. You're not gonna have enough room for the things on Canada. I know, I should stop, shouldn't I? So that, that'll be the end of the video. <laughs> Our second stop was a mall, sporting two fast charging stations and one J1772 station. But we're good right here. Yeah, we're great. Okay. You guys ready for stop number two? Yeah. Yeah, ready to get out? You gotta press the button down and pull hard, there you go. Orange flap down, good. It would be April's first EVgo fast charge. Someday, when gas cars are dead, this will all seem quaint. Is this the way you hold it up? Just try both ways. Okay. Okay, you're allowed to start charging. You're allowed to, but are you? We were. This mall serves as a lunch spot if your kids aren't too distracted by the promise of a carousel ride to eat their lunch. Forty-five minute session ended, um, and we're at ninety plus percent charge. So I actually just moved over to the L2 charger while the kids ride the carousel. Because of tapering, the fast charger wouldn't be giving us that fast of a charge anyway. So there we go. What is our next charging station? It's 180 miles away. Ah, uh, the third leg. Just 180 easy miles to the next and last fast charge of the day. As any chair worth its salt will tell you, you're nowhere without a third leg. But try telling that to a human who's been walking around with two legs for their entire life, and for whom the novelty of car games is wearing off. Liquor and wine outlets, anyone have that on their bingo sheet? Do you guys have a river on your card? Is no one playing anymore? No one's playing anymore. Yeah. Hey. Thankfully, it wasn't long before we discovered our son's affinity for the dulcet screams of Bjork. Now, I need to apologize, because I didn't get the rights to Bjork's song, It's Oh So Quiet. I could have called her, and she probably would have said yes. Anyway, if you could hear my son's hysterical laughter, you'd love this clip. But the best you're going to get is his impersonation after the song ended. <laughs> We just got to Augusta, Maine. And we're at our hotel. And we're at our hotel. And you're not acting normal. <laughs> what? How, how am I supposed to act normal? What, you, what am I doing different? You're like, you're like talking like you're gonna be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so this was by far the longest stretch and we still have 73 miles of range left. And this hotel is right next to a fast charger at a Hannaford supermarket. So we will charge there after we find something to eat. So that noise you hear is the EVgo charger and it is a humming at the local Hannaford supermarket. The Bolt has two different displays while charging. When the car is off and fast charging, it looks like this, showing the time remaining until an 80% charge is achieved. 
And just so you can see, I turn the car on to see the power coming into the car. It's about 33 kilowatts, which is about what you'd expect from a 100 amp uh, fast charger. I will need to come back for a second charge to fill it up for tomorrow's venture across the border. It's actually been a really boring and uneventful trip in terms of charging because everything's kind of worked out. Yeah, which is why you thought the world needed to see it. And ladies and gentlemen, it gets no better, as you will note in the enthusiasm exhibited in this next clip. Here for the second round, we're about 67%, so hopefully this next round will do it. It did do it. But in order to wipe some of my residual shiss away, I did a third session, and I wish I hadn't. Here's why. I'm about to get into costs, if that bores you. Skip ahead 32 seconds. Remember that tapering graph I showed you? This one? Well, the first charging session fell into this range. It cost me 36 cents per kilowatt hour. Not bad. The second session fell within this range and cost me 56 cents per kilowatt hour. And an ill-advised third session that fell into this range cost me $1.06 per kilowatt hour. Ouch. Total cost was about 24 bucks to add 191 miles of range, but I think I should have stuck to my sweet spot. Mileage-wise, we would have been fine. 171 miles separates us from the Canadian border. We'll stop for lunch at a restaurant just across the border with a free L2 charger to give us a little confidence as we head to our first Canadian fast charge, another 47 miles away. We crossed the border without incident, plugged in at the free L2, which had no reserved parking, but PlugShare users left a tip in the app to park on the sidewalk, so we did. So we are in St. Stephen, Canada. We just crossed the border and about a mile down the road is that charging station. I'm a little bit worried because uh, it seemed like it was mostly downhill from Maine to get here. And so I'm worried about the trip back to make sure we have enough miles. So we might make, maybe making an extended stop here on the way back to make that happen. For now, we're just gonna enjoy ourselves, have some lunch before we head on to hopefully a fast charger. That's about 50 miles away. So we are in Canada for our first charge at a fast charger. A pleasant surprise that it's 125 amps, so it'll be a lot faster than the 100 amp Indigo station. So as station power goes up, we're seeing our costs drop. This session costs 33 cents per kilowatt hour. Not bad, Canada Duncan. Uh, there's not much around here. There are some picnic tables, which are very overgrown, but. You know, we're not complaining because it's a nice fast station, so. We quickly found something to complain about. Canadian Independence Day. Did you know they celebrated on July 1st? Neither did we. And did you know they liked to camp on July 1st? Neither did we. And did you know this guy was in for a nasty charging surprise? Neither did he. After some frantic phone calling, looking for a site with an electric hookup, we ultimately stayed at a campground we might not otherwise have picked, and realized we didn't have the right plug for the 30 amp outlet, which looks like this. Which is kind of what my face looked like when I realized it was nothing like the plug at the end of the juice box we brought from our home charging setup, which looks like this. Surprise! This is a 50 amp plug. Ready for some more electric jargon? The 30 amp plug is called a NEMA TT30. The juice box plug is called a NEMA 1450. So I made a bunch of phone calls and searched online for an adapter. Having made some bad assumptions about RV outlets, I was a bit frazzled. Are you guys tired? Yeah. We also tried to put the kids to bed at their normal time, but the late sunset made that all but impossible. So we scrapped the plan. The kids made the best of it, conquering fears of deceptively fast-looking slides. <laughs> and staying up for the fireworks show, celebrating Canadian independence, the recording of which is only slightly more underwhelming than the show itself, which mattered not at all to the kids.
I awoke early to prepare myself some coffee. And though I'm not sure what the Canadian red squirrel that greeted me was saying, because I don't speak Canadian, I imagined it was something like, what are you doing here? You're not even plugged in. Do you even have enough kilometers on that battery to get where you're going? What's your family going to think if you run out of juice? Is your entire trip going to be a failure? I don't know, Mr. Red Squirrel. I don't know. <laughs>